In order to be a successful centered rider, sit correctly on your saddle with your body in balance above your seat bones and with a straight back. Here is your center between my hands. Okay. Now, you've been imagining it a little too high and a little too far forward. I want you to imagine it. Don't do anything. Just imagine it like a jellyfish or something in there. And let it slide a little back and slide a little down between my hands. So it's nearer this hand and a little lower. That's the idea, Linda. And build a little nest in there. So it'll be right over your seat bones, which is where your center is, right over your seat bones, not ahead of them. And that brought your buttocks down. You feel that? And relaxed them. And this, and it in turn relaxed the back up here. In order to release tensions in the back and hips, you must balance and free the head and neck. I call this being on the bit. How do we achieve being on the bit? Well, one way is to pull some hairs just above your ears, about two-thirds of the way back on your skull. You'll have to imagine pulling hairs because of your hat. But when you keep pulling these hairs, you'll find that the head balances, the face feels heavy, the back of your neck feels long and softly stretched, and your throat feels very soft. This is exactly what you want to do with your horse when he's on the bit. Come on, fella. You want his neck to have a long, soft, slightly stretched feeling, and the under part of the throat to be really soft. Now, there's another way of finding the position for your head for being on the bit, and that's by saying, ah. Now, if I say, ah, in a nice, free, open way, right from my belly up through my open throat, ah, it has resonance and carries. But if I lift my head up, it loses its resonance. Ah, and if I drop my head, it becomes guttural. Ah. So you try it, Kelly, just looking out there, soft-eyed, and saying, ah. ah. And now go up and hear it go gut. Ah. Good. Now go slowly up and down and find how small that area is where it's correct. Uh, Very small, you see. And, and, and there's only a small area where your horse is on the bit. There's only a small area where you're on the bit. Only when the head and neck are free can the rider really release tension in the lower body. The imagery techniques that I teach help. Put yourself a little above the bit and then on the bit while I put my hand here. And I want you to feel the difference in the middle of your back. All right. For, yeah. Now come on the bit. Breathe and come on the bit. Don't pull back. Don't pull back. What happened? It softened, it softened a lot, didn't it? Yeah. As your horse's back will soften as you put him on the bit. You see? Okay. Now go a little above the bit, just a little. You see, it already you've lost it. Yeah. Now come down. Okay, now, again, go above the bit. Feel your leg? Mm -hmm. Now come down. Don't pull the leg back. There. Feel the leg? Mm -hmm. Different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Much freer. Okay, now you could let this leg sink. Good. Now let's put this hand over the head. This left one? Yeah. Letting the fingers grow softly. Now go to your side of your neck and your back of your neck and the armpit and empty all those spots and say, ah, uh, ah, uh, send it right out across the field there, ah, uh, sit down, sit, 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 ah, uh, and let that ah uh, come from the bottom of your belly, ah, uh, and let it come from your legs and from the bottom of your feet. Uh, 
That's coming, feel it? Now you're beginning to sit on that saddle. Linda was perched on her saddle due to tension. Imagining your feet sinking down into soft, warm mud will help release tension and deepen your seat as your body and legs soften. Many times we must correct body balance forward and back as well as laterally before we can do the previous exercises to release body tensions. Forward and backward balance can be found by finding where you can balance your body on your seat bones without using your legs at all. To correct lateral imbalance, I first stand behind the rider to see that the rider's back and saddle are centered on the horse. If that is correct and the rider is still uneven, the problem may be too much strength on one side of the body. The side that is strong in the body tends to pull together. Those strong muscles tend to contract. This tends to pull the strong leg up and the strong shoulder down. Now this is a small case of it and I don't know that I'm going to get any other case and so I'm going to use it while I have it. She's not bad. So there you have a situation of shortening the strong side. Then the rider tends to rise over that stirrup so that as you stand behind them, and I always go to the long side and watch them go both ways around, they will rise over that stirrup. And you've seen plenty of people do this in your teaching, right? Okay. The changing of diagonals helps them discover this. The hand over the head helps them soften the side. Now, uh, come straight toward the audience. And I think you will all notice that her left foot is about an inch higher than her right foot. Can you all see that? Saddle goes to the weak side, because that's the reaching side. This right side feels inadequate, and it reaches, and it reaches with that foot, and it reaches with the seat bone, and nothing happens, and it's not there, and the saddle goes with it. You correct it with changing the diagonals and putting the hand on the, over the head of the strong side, which lengthens the side and drops the diagonal seat bone and foot down into the, onto the saddle and into the stirrup. And you have to explain that what they have been feeling has been incorrect. What has felt correct has been incorrect. And this new, strange, feeling that feels so wrong, they won't, they're going to have to recognize it as correct and learn what that feels like so they can find it again. Let's go back to my work with Linda standing still. What can she or you do when there are no instructor's hands to help you? Well, I teach what I call my Indian routine, which you can use to balance and free your body when you are alone. You know, first I talked to you about soft neck, free neck, a balanced head, long, wide back. Think about that a moment. Let that go through your consciousness. And then put the back of your hand against your back at the bottom of your rib cage, which is where I put my hands, my fingers, for the takeoff point for the laser beams. So you go forward and up from your hand through the top of the sternum, you go back and up from the top of the sternum up through the nape of the neck. When you feel pretty good about that, imagine the spring, a string inside your body, inside that, just inside your hand, and tie it to your sacrum and begin letting the sacrum down through the saddle. And this will really lengthen. Don't push too hard with that hand, Margaret. Just as a touch, so you can let that sacrum down. If you need to, take your center further back. You may need to put your hand on your belly a little lower down. There. That helps you settle down in the back of your saddle. And then you may need that. That's it. And that's, that sacrum is going to go through the saddle, and you watch it, through the horse, out the bottom of the belly, all the way to the ground, where you put it down gently. Okay. When you're happy with that, 
bring your hands back to place. Position. Okay, now, you're all familiar with the Indian in my book. Now he sits, as you know, on his horse bareback with a very straight back. It's called appeal to the great spirit. So he's appealing up there. He does look up, but he doesn't look up by looking, by leaning back or hollowing his back or anything. He leaves that body erect and just dips his head up. That little tip of the head. And then he moves his arms in a rotary way from the shoulder. He just rotates the entire arm from the shoulder and lets the arms hang out. So the palm of the hand looks up with the same way the eyes are looking up. Let that happen. Don't go too far back, Margaret. Sit upright. Don't lean back. You're hollowing the back again. Now, Margaret, come back to position. Now, let the shoulders hang. Now, now let your hand, yeah. That's good. Now let your arms hang. Now, without taking the shoulders anyway, simply rotate the arms. See the difference? Yes. And let them open there. Yes. Now look up. See, there, that's good. See, that was very nice. Okay? And let your throat be all free and open. Let your collarbone separate. Let your, the ribs separate from your sternum so they, the whole front of your rib cage is opened up. Let your diaphragm open sideways and up and down. And let your abdomen, the same, the whole abdominal muscles, open up and down, sideways. So there's a long distance between your chin, your throat, and your pubic arch. Leave a long distance between the throat and the pubic arch. Feel the openness of the body. Feet in the mud, head in the sky. Really send it up. And when you're satisfied with that, come back to position with your head and arms, but keep the openness. And put your hand on your belly with your thumb about over your navel and contemplate your center. But supposing I wasn't here, that's what the Indian routine is all about. What do you do when you don't have somebody to help you? So you go through your Indian routine and then, sitting there, soft-eyed, looking ahead, you take your stubby bang back a little, and then you sink the sole of that foot toward the horse's hind foot, and you just feel that this sole is going to sink down there as you sit there as quietly and breathing. And you just let it get longer and longer and longer like that. Good. Now take this foot so leg back to position and sink the other one a bit. Again, breathing and soft-eyed and balanced and sitting. Be sure both buttocks stay on the saddle. You don't want to pull one off. And then take that leg back to position. And let's do this one once more. Careful. Now sit heavy and deep. Don't, don't hollow the back. That's good. And just feel that foot sinking toward the horse's foot. Now how do you feel about that? Would that help if there was nobody there to pull your leg for you? That really would help My you. My leg feels longer now. It, your leg feels longer. That's great. So now you've got a tool to use at home when nobody's around. You can do the whole Indian routine, and then you can let those legs long, and yeah, you are ready to go off. <laughs>